Welcome to World Walks, a joint production of Firehouse Projects, The Unconservatory, and Cranberry Coast Concerts, supported in part by a grant from the state of Florida and viewers like you. With your hosts, Lilia Fontana, Kirk Whipple, and Marilyn Morales. Walks before curfew walks through remote and urban areas, walks in neighborhoods have become escapes from our enclosures of four walls. At times contemplative and in reflective solitude, walking becomes a vehicle for introspection and meditation, facilitating deep thought. We walk in fellowship together with family and friends who have hunkered down together. Whether alone or with companions, Walking is a deeply personal activity. In response to the isolation our society has collectively experienced during quarantine, we have launched World Walks, firehouse projects in collaboration with the Unconservatory and Cranberry Coast Concerts, presents this virtual experience inspired by our immediate and increased need to connect with each other. Good afternoon and welcome indeed to World Walks, our series of up and close personal interviews with artists and educators walking, talking, creating in their natural environments. And our environments have become much busier in recent months as we are collectively trying to return to whatever the new normal might be. So hi, Kirk and Marilyn. Hey there, Lily. You there, Marilyn? She needs to unmute. She's working on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Marilyn. Hi, Marilyn. Bernie was in the way. Oh, there you go. Ah. He's Bernie's always in the way. Ah. Well, but you know, uh, before we get into the program, we have a couple of um, a couple of important people to thank uh, in Tallahassee, actually. Yes, indeed we do. Uh, and actually, those would be the people in the um, you know uh, state of Florida Division of Cultural Affairs for supporting World Walks and some of the other things around the state. Many things around the state uh, with uh, with grant funding. We also thought we should tell you too. Uh, we're hoping that the governor signs off on the arts bill. So if anybody wants to write to Tallahassee yeah. and tell them how important the arts are, this is a great opportunity to do so and uh indeed it is and uh hey uh lily why don't you uh tell us about our special guest today on world walks 
Absolutely. <clears throat> we are getting a chance to talk to Ali Diaz and uh, get to experience what she experienced through her photographs and short little films that she took. Um, Ali is the owner of Casa Artali and the former executive director at the Miami-Dade County Public Schools. Uh, she's also a lawyer. Um, she was as well a featured guest on our premiere season of Snapshots from the Cuban Diaspora and Odyssey and Images. Prior to the pandemic, Ali was preparing to host, actually, one of our live Snapshots exhibition at Casa Artali, and unfortunately we had to postpone it. Uh, we don't know yet to when, but um, we are continuing with that series. We got funded to continue with that series, so I'm very excited to announce that and uh, to let you know to stay in tune in our web on our website, on Facebook, and social media. And now I'd like to present Ali and uh, her photographs. Hey. Hey. Thank you for joining me. You, you want me to speak now or are you going to play the first? Sure, photograph? say hi. Say, hey there, okay. Ali. <laughs> All right. I just wanted to say hi to everyone who's joined us and i um, happy that you're here. And um, obviously this is going to be really informal and I'll just chat along the way as we see some of the photographs. Okay, ready? Here we here we go. I've got them all lined up and uh, uh, let's let's get let's go. Deep. So there's there's our our first photo. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll just sh share overall how this whole thing started. I like probably many many other people as this world walks um, series um, you know shows I was stuck at home uh, this past year and wanting to stay active and alive, et cetera, I, I started walking and this is me walking <laughs> the pavement. Uh, initially, I just literally just walked around my neighborhood and with my iPhone, I just started snapping pictures of what I thought were pretty houses and landscaping, et cetera. <clears throat> and uh, then it just became more of a thing. I, um, I got tired of, of walking the same neighborhood and I have a scooter. So every day after a few weeks, I started getting on my scooter every single day and driving however many blocks, several miles away from my neighborhood. And then I would walk an hour in other neighborhoods. Uh, and like I said, initially I was just taking neighborhood shots and house shots, et cetera. But uh, I actually have covered now from north. I live in 76th Street uh, off Biscayne Boulevard, and I've gone all the way to 130th Street in Miami, uh, north, as far back as down as Southwest 8th Street, south, and east to... Um, just over Miami Beach, over the bridges, and then back to Northwest 2nd Avenue. So it's a, a very large stretch. Um, obviously, I'm not gonna share all the pictures today. I have well over 500 pictures of all the different neighborhoods. So this is just a snippet of various areas and, and how my flow went from neighborhoods and houses um, to other ideas as I walked along Miami. So I guess, Ali, we could say that um, you've been leaving pieces of your souls all over Miami-Dade County. Yes. <laughs> yes, and there's a reflection. Hey, you know, I just thought I should show you the shoes that I've been, I'm gonna, while well, you take a big, I'm gonna go to walk and take my shoes. I can't believe that I didn't think of showing you my shoes. Because they have been worn down to like my feet actually are showing through, but that might be a little embarrassing. So I'll I'll keep that to myself for now. Okay. Well. Well. Here we go. Let's. Uh, let's. There's some lovely images, not just of walking, but uh, let's let's uh, let's move forward um, here. Wow. And um, it was like a full moon hanging out at the Everglades to watch a full moon and, and, a, and a bike ride, but I certainly stopped and, and strolled a little bit to take some photographs there. 
I really thought this was really interesting because a lot of people have um, shot and looked up at the sky. Maybe for the first time in a long time. I don't know, but <clears throat> I got a chance to curate and uh, see everyone's. So um, it's really interesting because in a way, I think we all we all did um, start walking and, and looking up at the sky. Maybe ve yeah. very primitive. Maybe it's a primitive thing of looking up at the sky and I dare say worship it. But I certainly was thankful to have it. Well, and here's and the, another sky shot. Yeah. 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 So this is right down the street from where I live. It's at um, Bay Point um, Park. And um, the sky was really weird that day. And I just the sun looked as strange as it does on the photograph. I really didn't mess, you know, to play with a photograph very much at all. Um, it was just stunning how the sun was just beaming across um, the park and the bay. It looks like a fireball. Yeah. It yeah, it was really intense. Menacing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's powerful. No, no, I don't mean the photograph. I love the feeling. Looking at the sun, it was like really awe-inspiring, you know? Mm. Well, don't look at it too long. <laughs> yeah, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, and in the other direction. Yes. Yeah. These are the little manatees. I, I live on the little river and so a lot of my walks are, are along the river and crossing little bridges along the way. And um, it's relatively common to see the manatees, especially in the fall and the winter. But it was very cool to see like a whole family of um, manatees swimming by. Well, and in fact, we have a, uh, a very, very short movie of manatees, which you took. Yeah, manatees are like my pets around here. And uh, <laughs> they will actually come to the dock and they love fresh water. So if you spray them with fresh water, they will literally just uh, the, hang the, out and show you their pleasure. They'll eat out of the palm of your hose, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, I, um, I, I wanted to comment, too, because uh, um, Marilyn and I and our uh, European friends, when we did a performance with the United Nations Piano Quartet in Key Largo several years ago, they were staying on, um, in, at, a, at a friend's house who was right on a river with the manatees, and they did the same thing. They, just, they, they love coming up and uh, uh, getting that fresh water. So um, here's here's the video and uh, something that uh, people from who aren't in Florida haven't seen it uh, may may find this especially charming. <laughs> Oh, they really are gentle giants, aren't they? Yeah, I just love how she rolled on her back and just took it in, you know. It's really sweet. It was. It looked so cute. They're so cute. Yeah. You want to just go in there and pet it. <laughs> I know. I've always wanted to pet them. I, I was able to pet one once. On I was kayaking, and they come right up to the kayak, and I was able to stroke its back. But it's not as pleasant as you would think. It's like, like really rough and really. Not, 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 it, yeah, is it they're, slimy? They're it's very rough. It's almost like a Brillo pad, you know. Oh, it's weird. Yeah, it's rough. At least the one that I touched, you know. But they're maybe it was, maybe it was getting old. <laughs> yes, yes, we all get rough <laughs> around the edge. <laughs> But they're but they are so so gentle. It's it's really yeah. really a wonderful thing when you see them up close. Um, they are very gentle. 
and let's take all of it in here. Here we go. So again, it's just around the neighborhood, obviously, you know, particularly rainy day. Um, this is actually a puddle in a parking lot and um, the birds are just enjoying it. Almost looks like a painting. Yeah, there was like an impressionistic yes. uh, look to it. Yeah, until you said it was a, a puddle in a parking lot, I thought it was a very large pop puddle. I don't know if you can tell that there's like a great a drain uh, right behind where the bird oh, is. You spoiled that. I thought. Oh, it was I'm so sorry. Bridges, <laughs> and I'm going poof. But it, it kind of, it, but it shows it. how my 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 brain started changing. I went from having scenery to just focusing on detail. It went crazy. I mean, a few months after this picture, I mentioned that I would have shot a picture of the drain. You know, it was. <laughs> I just started focusing on odd pieces of the surroundings. Well, it's it's very Monet Monet water lilies. Yes, oh, and yes. it's a bit of a Monet. One. Ah. This is probably a picture that everyone has ever been to Fairchild Gardens has ever has taken. Uh, but this is from Fairchild Gardens, and um, you know the classic picture on the mound that you, as you look out on the lake. <clears throat> Yeah, and and um, th those of us in uh, who've been in and around South Florida, a lot of these scenes might be uh, sort of sort of commonplace. But then again, imagine folks who are living in other places. It looks very, very exotic. I mean, it is. It's a wonderful place. We've we've it been is. there, and it's it's a wonderful, um, just really really great way to spend an afternoon. And uh, we were. We were able to get there and uh, want, um, go into the evening when they had an astronomy night one one time. This is again just uh, this is at the very beginning of when I started taking the pictures on my walks. This is um, on the bay, bay sh on the Bay Shore Drive in, in Miami Shores, and I was just taken by all the palms and you know again focusing on the detail. The person just lying there on the lounge. Um, looking back and to me considering what the world was going through in the pandemic and see this person just really relaxing and enjoying themselves in in this peaceful setting was such a demarcation of contrast you know and um it just gave me peace to put myself in that person's place you know hmm. And this is when I started getting a little funky, you know, it's like I didn't want to just take pictures and, and I started playing with exposure. And um, this is actually the uh, Lahaiti Cultural Center. And had I not overexposed it, there is a building there, but for some, somehow the part that did not get, because the building, the rest of the building is, I don't know, it just blended into the, into the brightness. And, uh, and the palm just kind of stood out. So I just started playing with exposure and stuff like that. Wow, it's fun. I when I because when I saw it first, I thought that it was uh, some sort of uh, graphic logo, perhaps. And so that's an actual shot just with the exposure ramped up. Yep. Yeah. If you if you if I were to show you, I mean, the, the you know, on the, a picture that that is not overexposed, there is a building there that, and the white, the blue line uh, mm -hmm. triangle is just part of the, an accent of the building. Huh. <clears throat> Nothing to say about this. I just love, started getting into trees. And for a while I took a lot of pictures of trees and plants and then I, kind of like disappeared into them, into their detail um, of the leaves. And mm -hmm. it was very, for me, and looking at these shots now, I, I remember how I, it was very much like a meditation where I would, literally everything around me would disappear and I would just 
be within the tree. I, I know that it's starting to sound crazy, but that's <laughs> kind of how I felt. <laughs> Not at all. It's it's a it's a great it's a great escape to lose yourselves in you lose yourself in in images. Yeah, yeah, it was for me. Again, part of walking in the neighborhood. This is a an area in Elport Town, uh, which is actually called Sherwood's Forest, and uh, a beautiful little it, like an oasis right off Biscayne Boulevard and like eighty second, eighty third Street. And uh, it's gorgeous in there. There actually is an Indian um, site where <clears throat> I forget what were what, what the Indian the Indian um, that were in, in Florida. Atacesta, oh. Atacesta. Yes, yes, yes. And they had uh, there's a I don't know if it's a burial site or a site where they know that they actually live there, but it's a very very beautiful. Would well, see it, it, it kind of looks like a, a you know like this fairy tale cottage you know yeah and uh, in the midst of the forest it is very forestry in there yeah this is Miami Shores I believe just, that's again that's at the very beginning when I was just shooting houses that I thought were pretty and with nice landscaping well, this this reminds me of Miami Springs um, yeah. We did an event at the, the Curtis Mansion, right, yep. Kirk? And they gave us a history tour of that whole area. And apparently, uh, Curtis, the the originator, the founder of that city, uh, along with Opalaka, um, and he did this kind of architecture. And all throughout Miami Springs, they have that not very many left, but it's interesting that you see it here in Miami Shores as well, probably influenced by uh, the architect and his, Curtis's idea of what he wanted. Yeah. Um, it's really, really neat to see. This is back to uh, like Sherwood's forest area. It's just adorable little houses there. They're all little cottages and really old for Miami, mostly probably in the 1930s. Sorry about that. Yeah, our uh, our big our, our big joke that Meryl and I laugh at a little bit about uh, relative terms in um, uh, historical yeah. artifacts. Uh, here in here in Miami, it's a historical historical artifact if it's more than 40 years old, whereas if you go to <laughs> Massachusetts, for example, it has to be 240 years old. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's all relative. And yeah. unfortunately, Miami has a, um, a history of destroying and rebuilding uh, things that, I don't know, are not as appealing as if they would have left the original. Yep. So uh, that's my pet peeve of Miami is the destruction of history. Yeah, yeah we, 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 respect. we concur. <laughs> I agree. I agree. It's happening in my neighborhood. Everything is beautiful. Old houses are being knocked down and these yeah. little like, mansions are coming up. This and house. I think, I, ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say your area is uh, a, a neighborhood that's one of the oldest along with uh, Little Havana in that area are, you know, back in the early 20th century, right? Yeah. Yeah, and well, no, yeah, this, this, the, the oldest houses where I live are probably from the 30s and 40s, nothing earlier. But the neighborhood itself has been here for, it's one of the original neighborhoods, yeah. going back to, you know, the turn of the century. Yeah. yeah, way back in the 20th century. <laughs> yeah, way back. Yes. Way back in 1910. <laughs> uh -huh. So this house, you know, if you don't mind going back, that pink house, I I had never seen it up close. I, I have a little boat, and I've seen that house for decades from the water, and I always called my attention because it's like this bubblegum pink, and it's really big, and you can see it from way out in the water. And I always would ride by on the boat. It's like, I always liked it. It looks like a like a ship or something. And one day I was walking around without having a clue that I was going to run into my pink house. 
And I'm walking around, and I look up, and there it is. And it was like, oh, my God, I screamed for joy when I saw it. I had never seen it close up, and it didn't disappoint. It's an incredibly unusual and, and very cool house. Well, it so sounds like you have um, an anonymous but intimate relationship with the house. Maybe you ought to just go up, knock on the door, and say, hi, I just wanted to tell you. Uh, <laughs> Let me tell you, I, I, I was tempted because I really, there's something about that house that I just love, you know. Uh, I guess it's the simplicity. It. It's like a simple house and then they threw this pink on it, which made it like really weird, you know. So anyway. Yeah, it pops. Yeah, it does. And again, I was just walking down Biscayne and this is one of my favorite structures. Um, I've been in there many, many times for events and it's just, um, you know, a, 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 it's called the box and it's part of the, uh, what used to be the McCarty um, complex. It's now part of the uh, Young Arts um, group and they hold a lot of art and cultural and different uh, artistic events inside there. And it's just a very cool place to go into. I, yeah, I was I was going to comment. Uh, I, I figured that's uh, where it was because um, I may have purchased some products with that logo on it once or twice in my life. Oh, I'm yes, sure. I'm yes, they have the logo of the Bacardi. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This, I don't know if you can even tell, but I was in Miami Beach and this is actually the screen uh, for the Soundscape uh, Cinema at the Soundscape Park. And I was waiting for a performance to begin that is played there on the wide, big screen. And I just thought it was really cool how the images on the screen match the color of the sky. And I don't know, I just really like that connection. Hmm. And then again, this is just me getting into the nitty gritty and the de detail of of homes and places. Um, this is closer to um, probably Edgewater and the design district. Um, but this is a house um, that just basically one wall of the house looks like this. And I just focused in on, on some of the detail. That is cool. Yeah, it it's not, to... a, it looks like it would be a, uh, you know, storefront or, or a mural. I guess it is a mural, but it's literally uh, a wall on, on a house, whole wall. Who would dare do that but an artist? <laughs> Maybe. I just, yeah, I liked it. <laughs> and, and again, this is me playing with overexposure. This is actually one building. This is in the design district. And, and again, when I overexposed it it the the white part of it kind of disappeared and all you saw were these gaps in the building um and i thought it was interesting how it looked there. same thing this is a wall on one of the one of the buildings i don't know if it's a hotel or a con probably a condo building in Edgewater, and uh, they have a number of uh, walls that have different designs like that. And this is just a very small section of the design. What's What's interesting about these, actually, these shots, they they almost look like the artist presentation to someone who'd say, "Hey, I'd like to put this up on your wall." Yeah, you know, yeah. it's uh, it's you've 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 been able to extract the, you know, the essential the essential artwork in each case. And this one is one that most people would recognize, I assume, and that's the Bacardi building, the Young Arts um, building now. Um, the tile. This is all tile um, work on that building creating this image. That's water. <laughs> the, um, you know, I, it was really hot during some of the times that, that I walked. 
And I was just walking down. This was um, probably between Buena Vista and um, the design district. And there was a trickle of water coming down and I just thought it was cool and I was very tempted to get under it because I was really hot. And uh, I believe I believe you have a video about that. And maybe you can set this up, Ali. No, I was just literally walking along and I saw this shower. I mean, it was like a trickle of water and I was hot as could be. And I thought, hmm, this might cool me off. And I considered getting under it and I, and I did, but I was very unpleasantly surprised by the water. I think I'm going to get under there. That's hot as hell. And it looks like nice urban outdoor shower. Check it out. Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't believe it. It's water is hot as hell. Wow. Okay. <laughs> So I was thinking, yeah, I thought I would uh, freshen myself up a little bit, but uh, water was there. It, it was like out of, you know, like boiling hot. It was, I really had to just go in and come out. It was very, really, really hot. So, but Aww. yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Goodness knows where that water was coming from. Maybe a boil. It was from the roof. I'm assuming that it was this rainwater that was being, uh, you know, uh, coming out of the drain from the roof of that building. But yeah, I mean, God knows what was in there. Who knows, you know, but I survived. It's, it's yeah. all good. And you're, and you're, you're still here to tell us about uh, a few I, more folks. I started with houses and landscaping or whatever. And then I just got lost in, in color and, and design and just lines and, and this is part of that. This is a building that looks exactly like that. And I was like, oh my God, I loved it with uh, you know, the lines and the blues. I still like it. This? Huh? Where is it? What area? <sighs> is that Wynwood? This might be Wynwood, between Wynwood. Yeah, it's like around Wynwood. Like probably, yeah, it's like the, the, Beginning of Wynwood, more towards like close to the school system. Okay. Behind there. I'm dating myself, but it looks very Miami Vice. Okay. I have no idea. I don't even know what it is. You know, it's, it didn't have any signs or so. Again, more detail of, um, uh, this is probably Edgewater. But it just goes to show you what a diversity of art there is uh, just just waiting around the corner for us. There are, um, I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of beautiful artwork uh, on buildings everywhere. Well, that's your area in the north us in the south i don't know we really don't know anything no. like that. <laughs> yeah and this is the same thing this is just what this building looks like pretty much except you know i'm i'm focusing on a particular detail of it mm -hmm. this is part of the actually of the of the box um the 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 orange box that we saw a little while ago it's just a, a detail of the top part of it. You know, you have the orange large column and then the box on top. And <clears throat> this is on the side. Mm -hmm. This is, a, I just enjoy this. There are several of this in, in this neighborhood. These are gates to um, entrances of um, to driveways. And there were there's several I, I probably by the same you know designer and the same builder because they're very similar style but with different you know animals and shapes and stuff. What's the material? It's like a metal. Okay. 
Yeah. Wow, that's nice. Mm -hmm. This is a, a very close up of uh, a sculpture in the design district. <clears throat> I forget what the sculpture actually is. It doesn't look anything like this. This is just uh, a close detail of it. I think it's like a big person kneeling down. Yeah, I forget exactly what it looks like. Well, it's it's sort of like uh, interesting. But what perspective does for you? You remember the uh, the uh, parable where three three blind people come up to an elephant, and uh, one of uh, one of them touches the trunk and says, "Oh, it's like a snake." The other one uh, touches the tail, says, "A very small snake," and one of them says, "No, you're all wrong because it's a tree because they get the foot." You know, in this in this case, you'd have to back up and see what the whole thing is yeah. all about, right? It's true because I don't even remember what it looked like. I'm pretty sure it's a person like kneeling, kind of like a Rodan, you know, the thinker type thing. Well, and the final shot. There's me walking again. Well, bra brava for for that series, Ali. Um, I I, uh, I I would like to say too. There's a. Um, uh, a new little featurette that we have coming up right now, inspired by, so you'll have to tell us your inspiration, but first, uh, let me get our screen up here again. Uh, here it is. Here are true facts about the dung beetle. The dung beetle survives mainly or solely by eating the faces of other animals. It's terrifying. Wait, that's a typo. It eats the feces of other animals. Well, it's even worse. The rolling dung beetle finds oh, that's the really horrible. smell. <laughs> the dung beetle then selects a choice piece to roll into right. a oh, oh, it. No, no, I told you, I won't, I'm not going to narrate the footage of poop. It's just not going to happen. This isn't better. This has nothing to do with the dung beetle. Fine. The female dung beetles then judge their potential mates by the size of their balls. Oh, come on, that's a lynx. <laughs> Santa baby. Run away, Santa baby. After a mating pair is established, the female often attaches herself to the dung ball chariot, and the male rolls them away from the dung pile. He does this backwards by pushing on the ball with his hind legs. Imagine getting into a car and putting your head face down on the seat, and then steering with your butt. That is how the dung beetle do. That's Needless a world walk. Say, they get lost from time to time. When it strays off course, the dung beetle climbs on top of its ball and uses the position of the sun, the moon, and even the Milky Way to reorient itself. Sort of like how ancient sailors once did. Except without the giant ball of shit. Here, a scientist uses a mirror to confuse the hell out of a dung beetle. <laughs> Along the way, he must face challengers who seek to claim his turd ball. The ensuing battle sometimes lasting for hours. When they have finally completed their journey, the young freaky couple digs a small hole in the soft sand. The female then lays her eggs inside the dung ball and then seals them up using more dung, her saliva, and her own feces, just for good measure. <laughs> and then when the baby is born, it eats its way out. <laughs> the circle of life. Just remember, no matter how bad your job is, even if you shovel crap for a living, at least you're not doing it naked and with your mouth and then eating it. <laughs> okay, oh, explain why oh, you're doing oh, this. That's horrible. Um, no, we, we have to... Explain. <laughs> I have to I leave the... Not, I had not seen that. I have to leave the credits up here because uh, we... Uh, borrowed this from YouTube where it's it's very available, but I felt at least compelled to uh, leave that up until the credit showed. There we go. <laughs> so, and Ali, you had an inspiration. For, we, we couldn't show your particular dumb well, beetle yeah. video. No, when we were talking about different videos and images that I had, you know, I remember my dung video, my dung beetle video which is a lot nicer than that one <laughs> I wish I had that one was very explicit and rather nasty but i swear to god one i've seen them many times now but um in my backyard my dog likes to poop on not on the grass but on the on the tile on the patio 
And so there's always a little poop out there somewhere that the beetles will find. And one day I saw exactly that, what you showed. I mean, a little beetle with a nice little piece of poop from my dog rolling it around and just rolling and rolling and rolling. And I was like, what the heck is that? I couldn't believe it. And I filmed it. And honestly, it was really cute. It was like, I'm so unbelievable. I had never heard of that until now. I mean, later I looked up, looked them up and I realized that it's called a dung beetle because it likes to push poop around, you know? <laughs> but anyway, uh, so we were talking the other day and we just thought, you know, even beetles went on world walks and some of them push poop around. <laughs> See, there you I'm go. I'm glad that I don't have to do that when I walk, you know. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah, this, yeah, that, that would be kind of a pretty crappy way to take your world walk. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Literally, huh? <laughs> well, and, and also, too, um, another, another little uh, uh, feature at here. We, what we want to do uh, while we still have time, I'm going to open up our gallery here and see we have a, a few people who are watching us live on this. If anybody had any, uh, uh, questions for Ali, and meanwhile you're thinking about that. Um, I'm going to say there's a this is, there's a little there's a quiz portion of our show right now, um, and we were thinking if you could you know we we all walk and we try to walk a little bit each day. Uh, Ten thousand step, steps seems to be kind of a goal, um, which is just under five miles. Uh, but I was thinking to myself, um, how long would it take if you could walk to the moon? say five miles a day or even 10 let's be let's be ambitious and make it 10 miles a day and i'm curious to know if anybody out there knows how long it would take to walk to the moon if you could walk 10 miles a day and not have to worry about breathing or eating in outer space no well, i know no. the answer but i forgot already okay well <laughs> If you could, if you could, if you could do that, it would actually take you about sixty-five years. And if you started walking today, you would arrive on the moon around Thanksgiving of twenty eighty-seven. So there you go. And and here's here's another quick question for you: uh, How long would it take to walk just to the edge of the Earth's atmosphere? I mean, let's say that you needed to breathe and you couldn't walk to the moon, but you could walk to the outer edge of the Earth's atmosphere. No takers? No, we're waiting for your response. <laughs> okay, it would take about a year and eight months because the, out, the Earth's atmosphere is about 6,214 miles away from the surface, at which point it starts dissolving into space. So there you go. It would take it take quite a while. Now, last uh, quick question in our quiz: How long would it take to walk from the surface of the water to the deepest part of the ocean, which would be in the Marianas Trench? How long? Go ahead. You know that one. We how long in terms of time or in terms of distance? No. Well, distance and or time. Okay. I, mean, I think could... it's, it's it's about six miles. Ding 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 ding. Yes, we have a winner. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's 6.8488 miles, and if you think about that, that would be done well within your daily world walk. Um, also, think about just driving at 60 miles an hour straight. Um, you know, you, you'd be able to uh, get from the surface to the bottom of the ocean in, a, in un, just under seven minutes. So that's uh, not quite nearly that, that amount of time, but you imagine what is under the ocean and how mysterious it is. Uh, there's a little bit for our perspective today on World Walks. And uh, we have a few more minutes left. Does anybody have any questions, comments for our guests or just want to say hello to Ali Diaz? Jesse, Hi, Dado. Thank the you Lord. for joining us. Uh, let's see. I wonder if she can unmute. You can uh, you can say hello if you wish. <laughs> and let's see here. I see my partner. I'll, I'll beat. Front. I'll beat her. I'll beat her to it. Hi, Allie. That was an oh, awesome buddy. presentation. Hi, buddy. <laughs> I How loved are... it as always. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so cute. Thank you. Hi, Lily. I, I, I Hi. Know... How are you? Good. Long time, huh? Sorry, I'm not exposing myself today. 
Oh, oh wow, that's too bad. Yeah. Hi, Ali. We're so happy to see your beautiful Marty. photographs. Oh, this is Marty and Sophie us. and Nori. Hi. Love thank you for coming. Great and, uh, show, by the way. Good. Oh, I'm glad thanks. you liked it. We'll be back. Well, and we should say, too, this is being recorded. And uh, in the uh, very near future, we're going to be archiving these on our YouTube channel. So uh, if everybody keeps coming back to World Walks on Facebook, uh, that's facebook.com slash World Walks Events. Um, or you could just look us up on Facebook, look up World Walks. You'll see these See, these are being recorded and will be archived. Uh, well, I'd like to thank our World Walk guest, owner of Casa Artali, former executive director of Miami-Dade County Public Schools, the lawyer and photographer, artist, Ali Diaz. Absolutely. Bravo. And, and we're, uh, we also you, want, want to thank uh, uh, some folks who are helping us to make this possible. That would be uh, the State of Florida Division of Cultural Affairs. So uh, that's, uh, that's it for, for us from World Walks. Uh, Lily, would you like to sign uh, us out yes. here? Absolutely. On behalf of Firehouse Projects. The Unconservatory. And Marilyn, what else? And I don't know. <laughs> you lost your script, Cranberry and Coast, Coast Concerts. Concerts. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. We uh, wish you wonderful walks from wherever you are in the world. Yeah. And yes, uh, in, in fact, um, it looks like we're wishing, as we're leaving this, uh, happy world walk to our pal Ali Miranda, who just yeah. signed in as we are signing off. <laughs> so, I missed it. This was well, last he, week, and I couldn't see it. I, I would well, have loved he to. he made it. He made it. Thank you for being there. <laughs> Thank you for presentation. Such a great presentation. So, so adios, adios, everyone. Until bye we meet bye, again bye next bye. time. Thanks bye. for joining us. Bye, everybody. See you soon. Bye. 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 Thank bye. you. Thank you.